Across from Dandolo's remains is one of the most important Byzantine mosaics that exists. It depicts the deusis. This is the Byzantine abbreviated Last Judgment, which excludes the usual angelic, demonic, and saintly figures and focuses on the central three persons Christ in the center, with his mother Mary on his right, and John the Baptist on his left. Normally, the deusis would be associated with a funeral, but since there are no burials here, we can assume that it was a votive panel, possibly erected in gratitude or as an offering. Curiously, we do not know anything about this beautiful panel. It is very likely that it belongs to the so called Paleologan Renaissance, named after the Paleologan dynasty, which began after the reconquest of Constantinople from the Latin Crusaders in 1261. Some have even claimed that the panel was erected to celebrate the victorious entry of Emperor Michael VIII Paleologus into Constantinople. The Paleologans oversaw an empire ravaged by crises and conflict, but which displayed unusual vitality in the arts. It is safe to say that some of the finest works of Byzantine art were produced in this age. Among these are the mosaics and frescoes of the Church of the Holy Saviour in Kora, now Carrier Museum in Istanbul, whose poetic and tender realism represents a triumph of this new aesthetic. The style of the deusis panel reflects some of these new tendencies. Let us take a closer look at the figure of Christ and compare it with the Christ from the panel of Constantine and Zoe. The figure of Christ of the left is from the panel of Zoe, while the figure on the right is from the deusis panel. The panel of Zoe was made much earlier, during Byzantium's second golden age. We immediately notice that the Christ from the deusis panel is less flat, linear in treatment, and appears full-bodied and round. This is due to the fine shading that creates a sense of volume in both the drapery and the face. Note how the folds of the drapery seem to be falling more naturally, following the contour of the body. Then the soft and rounded hand has a relaxed gesture of blessing, which appears much more lifelike than the hand in the earlier mosaic. And finally, we come to the face, which is so soft and carefully nuanced in shades of realistic flesh tones that we are immediately reminded of classical Roman art. This figure of Christ reveals his compassionate nature. This is not the severe-looking Christ that we encounter in earlier depictions. He is not here to judge, but to comfort. He resembles the humane Jesus that was developed during the Italian Renaissance in the 15th and 16th centuries. Damaged as it is, and lacking any context or date, this mosaic remains one of the grand achievements of European art. It marked the beginning of a Byzantine cultural and artistic renaissance that followed the restoration of Byzantium under the Paleologans in 1261. Unfortunately, the Byzantine renaissance never came to fruition due to the overall economic and military decline of the empire that ended in the Ottoman conquest two centuries later. The deusis mosaic is a masterpiece, not only in style, but also in technique, which is far superior to any other surviving mosaic in the city. It is a work of utmost perfection. The mosaic cubes used to create the extraordinary nuances of shading and detailing and those used for the gold background is laid out 
with unparalleled precision. Of all the surviving mosaics, the deusis offers us the best example of the true capabilities of the renowned imperial workshops.